Good morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning for our worship uh, service this morning at 10 a.m. from Sugarland Church of Christ. We welcome all those who are in attendance and we welcome those who are viewing us online. Uh, we pray that something will be said or something will uh, be done that will inspire you along our walk. Uh, we have a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, today after service, uh, meeting up front, the 25th anniversary of the Texas State Youth Conference. Uh, for those interested in attending um, and young people that are interested in attending, please meet us up here in the front row. Uh, that discussion will be led by Brother Kavon Hunter. And uh, we're, we're having it here again in Houston for the 25th year. <laughs> also, keep in mind on May 21st, we have a young adults and a young people's um, health, mental health rally that will be held here at the church. It's open to the city. Uh, we ask that you take advantage of that also. And on May 22nd, as we um, make attempts to reassemble, we will have song practice on May 22nd at 4 o'clock. That will be led by Brother E. Michael Fletcher. For all of us who have been singing through these masks, this is a time to come and really rejoice and uh, learn the words of those songs that we've been attempting to sing. We thank you for your patience with us. Uh, we're doing those things to, to keep us all healthy and strong. We have a few visitors with us this morning. I'm sorry, a few guests this morning. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stamps, uh, they come to us uh, this morning and they went Bible class and we welcome them here. Also, Sierra, Alan Lark uh, was with them this morning. I believe that's their niece. And she was a third grader in one of our in-person classes this morning. Uh, coming to us from California, uh, we have Jordan Senegal and her mother, uh, Paula Senegal. Uh, they worship at Rockville Church of Christ. They're also an integral part of our young people's Thursday uh, service. Uh, they have a Thursday Bible class for the young people. Uh, it's really interesting. You want to get on there and learn about some things that are happening to our young people and the way they are attacking those problems in a Christian way. But we welcome them here this morning with us. Uh, prayer requests. Please pray for Sister Scalfrey and her family. Uh, they're dealing with some health issues this morning. And Brother Charles Smith, one of our elders here, is having some tests this week. We pray that we get favorable results from that. We also have a prayer of thanksgiving from Brother Dominic Amagu. Uh, thanksgiving for a successful trip back from Nigeria. Him and his four adopted young people. Uh, we're thankful to have them here, and we will be seeing them and working with them in any way that we can help him make that transition from an empty nester. <laughs> we want to be there for Brother Amagu and his family. Uh, Sister Crystal Sherrod is asking for prayers for herself and also for her, uh, her husband and her family and some of the things that she is experiencing right now. Uh, just give her a hug and let her know that we're there for her. We're there with her. And uh, we want to help her through the situation. With that being said, please join me in prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we bow to you, we give honor to you on this your day. We're thankful for your son Jesus who died on that cross and uh, gave us this opportunity of prayer. We're thankful for him coming to us and showing us the example of how we should be better disciples toward you. We pray for those of our number who are ill. We pray for those of our number who are having uh, medical challenges and tests this week. We pray that you be with them and the doctors and help them regain that strength that they so desire so they continue to worship with us uh, here at Sugar Land. We pray for those who are in bereavement. We ask that you give them peace and comfort through this most difficult time in their lives. We be there for them again as a church to help them uh, with this Christian walk. We pray for those who are traveling. 
Would you give them traveling grace, uh, to find things well at their destination, and return to us here at Sugarland safely. We pray for the addition of the, the young people that are uh, joining Brother Amagu. We pray that we'd be there for them and help them through this transition of life that they're going through. We pray for our young people that are in school, that you continue to be with them and the educators that are helping them become better Christians, better citizens for uh, our community and for society. We say a special prayer for those who are graduating, that they uh, take on the challenge of a new uh, experience in life with Christian zeal that they had to uh, allow them to reach the point in their academic careers that they have success. We pray for your church here at Sugarland. We will continue to worship with you and, and speak only where the Bible speaks. But thank you for Brother Park and his family. We continue to pray that you continue to uh, keep your hand of grace and mercy around them as he imparts to us those things we must do by thus says the Lord. We pray for the songs that we'll sing, the prayers that we'll pray, the men that will serve this day as we uh, honor you on this your day. We give a thanksgiving. We also ask you to forgive us of those things that we've done contrary to your will, those things that have caused us to falter. We pray that uh, as you forgive us, that we also forgive ourselves and move forward and put those things behind us. Continue to be with us and guide us to the furthest of your service. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here this morning to see everyone. As I always say, if you ain't been through nothing this past week, I want you to know that you're blessed. But if you have been going through some things that just didn't quite go your way, I want you too to know that you're blessed. Blessed because you're here this beautiful Sunday morning. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. <clears throat> Jesus rose with all power in his hand. My Jesus rose with all in his hand. And it, they tell me that he died on him. And I know that he rose Sunday morning. Jesus rose with all power. And is and is my Jesus rose oh, with all power in his hand. Yes, he did, and my Jesus rose oh, with all power in his in his hand. In his hand, they tell me that he died on a Friday. And I know that he rose a Sunday morning. Jesus rose oh, with all yeah, in his hand, in his hand. They tell me that the angels came down from glory. And he rose. Well, the angels came down from and they tell me that they rolled a stone no. They tell me that the angels came down from and it rose. My Jesus rose with all power in his, in his hand. Jesus, my Jesus rose with all power in his hand. And my Jesus, my Jesus rose oh, with all power in his, in his hand, in his hand. They tell me that he died on a Friday, and I know that he rose on a Sunday. My Jesus rose oh, with all his, in his hand, a hand. Jesus, Jesus, rose, rose with all 
in his hand. And my Jesus, my Jesus, rolled roll with all in his, in his hand, in his hand. They tell me that he died on a Friday. And oh, that he rose. My Jesus rose with all yes in his, yes in his hand. Amen, amen. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. <clears throat> Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Please, sir, hear my arm oh, cry. And will now, while, while on others thou art called, calling, please, sir, do, do not pass me. And I'm calling you, Savior, say, say, yeah. oh, Savior, Savior, I want you to give him my arm, oh, cry, cry, and will now, while, while on others, you are called, called, calling, Master, do please don't pass me by, and will now let, let me at the throne of mercy, please, sir, find, find us. A sweet relief, and will now kneel, kneeling there in deep country. Tradition will now hail my unbelief, and I'm calling you Savior, Savior. Oh, 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 oh say, say, yeah, I want you to hear in my arm, I'm both right. And oh, 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 while on others thou art called, calling. Master, do please don't, don't, don't pass me by. Will now let, let me at the throne of mercy. Please, sir, find a sweet relief, relief. And will now kneel, kneeling there in deep country tradition. Will now hail, hail my, my unbelief, and I'm calling you Savior, Savior, oh, Savior. I want you to hear my humble cry and woe while on others you are called, calling and master do. Please don't, don't, don't pass me by, and I'm calling you Savior, Savior, and oh, save, 
Savior, I want you to hear my, hear my humble cry. come to you in the name of Jesus. This morning praying our Heavenly Father for first that you forgive us of anything that is not commanded for us to do. We pray our Heavenly Father that you will now look upon us each and every woman, members of your family, members of this congregation, brothers and sisters in Christ, that you will first, our Heavenly Father, strengthen us as we come today to be among each other for strength. We pray, our Heavenly Father, that you renew our strengths, that we prepare ourselves, our Heavenly Father, to be the type of people that you will have us to be in a dying world. We pray for success in living that we may convert dying souls to you. We pray, our Heavenly Father, that as we gain knowledge of the messages that our minister has brought to us and will continue to bring to us, that we will take those things, our Heavenly Father, out to a dying world. We pray, our Heavenly Father, for our leadership at this congregation, that you continue to bless those men, continue to be with their families. We pray, our Heavenly Father, in, in this day that we have come together, that we will do the things that are pleasing in your sight to offer up worship to you. We pray, our Heavenly Father, in all things that you will bless our families, continue to let us strive, our Heavenly Father, and never forget the purpose that we are here for, our Heavenly Father, both as a congregation and as individuals, and as the same souls. We pray that if we continue in this service, our Heavenly Father, that you will be with us in all things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Farther alone, farther alone. Tempted and tried, we're off me to one wonder why it should be thus all the day long, and why there are other living up about us never more let's say go in the wrong and farther up long will know all about it yes and farther along will understand why Cheer up, my brother, they're living the sun, sunshine, yes, and we'll understand it all by and by. And when death has come, a man taken up, the one you see leaves our home. Home so lonely and dreary, and then do we wonder why others prosper? Yes, living so wicked year after year. Yes, and farther along, we'll know all about it. Yes, and farther along with our uh, understand why. Cheer up, brother, they're living the 
sun, sunshine, yes, and will I never stand it all by and by. And when we see Jesus coming in glory, yes, and when he comes from, from his home in the sky, and then we shall meet, meet him in that bright man, mansion, yes, and we'll understand it. Oh, by and by, yes, and farther along, long will, will know all about it. Yes, and farther along, long will uh, understand why. Cheer up, brother, live in the Sunshine, yes, and we'll understand it all by and by. Yes, and farther up, we'll know all. And yes, and farther along, I understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Sunshine, yes, and we'll understand it all and by. Amen, amen. Hold to God's unchanging name. Hold to God's unchanging name. We're going to sing the first and the last verse after which we have the speaker for this morning. Time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to you God's unchanging. Everybody ought to hold to it. Hold on to my God's unchanging hand. Oh, to his hand, God's unchanging hand, and you better be your hopes on things eternal. Oh, to you, God's unchanging hand, and when your journey is completed, and if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home and glory, glory and your enraptured soul will. Everybody ought to hold to it. Hold on to my God's unchanging. Everybody ought to hold to it. Hold on to my God's unchanging, and you better build your hopes on things eternal. That's a mighty long time saying, hold to your God's unchanging. Everybody ought to hold to it. Hold on to my God's unchanging. Everybody ought to hold to his hand to God's unchanging. And you better build your hopes on things eternal. You ought to hold to God's unchanging hand. And when your journey is completed, and if to God you have been true and fair, and bright the home in glory, glory, and your enraptured soul will. All the sisters on a whole, hold on to my God's unchanging. All the brothers on a whole, hold on to my God's unchanging. And you better build your hopes on it's eternal hope to God's unchanging hand.
all say amen. amen. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. And we do realize we need to hold to God's unchanging. Y'all, God is a good God. He's a, Even when we're not good, he's still a good God. And so we're just blessed to be able to worship and praise him in spirit and in truth on this morning. Uh, if you're here and you're visiting with us, we thank God for you and for um, and, and for allowing uh, you to come here into our presence. If you're visiting with us online, uh, thank you for tuning in with us. We we hope, trust, and pray that someday soon we can see you uh, face to face. But for all of our visitors near and far, we we roll out the red carpet for you and just thank you for being here. Uh, we are in the midst of our our sermon series, Help from One High. Uh, help from one high, and it, it, it's a lecture series on, um, uh, in, in, in some ways, on angels. And and um, in our PM, we'll be going consistent with our Wednesday evening Bible lessons, uh, talking about angels and so forth, and and, and Satan. Um, but in the mornings, uh, we're covering help from one high, which also has to do with uh, with angels. And so uh, today, we're in our topic. Well, let me hit the, the objectives uh, to identify the, the significance of spiritual warfare and how God protects his saints. Understand angelic intervention in the work of angels throughout history. Recognize the gravity of forces beyond our control and our need to depend on more powerful supernatural uh, power. And so last week, we're in Daniel chapter 10. Uh, this week will be in 2 Kings chapter 6. If you care to take a screenshot or a picture uh, so that way you can read ahead, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, uh, we're in Luke chapter 22 uh, in lesson 3, and then Daniel chapter, four, uh, Daniel chapter 3 uh, in lesson 4. Um, before we get started, I would like to read a scripture or for us to, to just reflect upon uh, just briefly, uh, in Psalm 46 and 1, Psalm 46 and 1, the Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And as we reflect on that verse, we recognize that God is always there with us, and he is always there for us. In other words, there is never a time where God is not there. And so it's a blessing for us to realize as the people, as children of God, that the Father we serve is always there no matter what. Uh, sometimes we may want to pick up the phone and call somebody in the middle of the night when we need something. But we don't want to disturb their rest. But with God, we can contact him anytime, day or night. And he's always listening. And so we're just blessed to be able to serve the God uh, that we serve. Let us pray, please. Heavenly Father, as we approach your presence this day, Father, help us to take in your very words of life, to apply them to our lives, so that we could be better in the future than we've been. Father, we thank you for your word and the opportunity to study here from. May you open up our hearts and pour into us the things you would have us to know. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. So in 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, we have a very interesting passage of scripture here. We'll start at verse number eight. The Bible says, now the king of Syria was making war against Israel. And he consulted with his servant saying, my camp will be in such and such a place. 
And the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him, as he was and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And no, and one of his servants said, None, my lord, or king, but, uh, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the, the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. So what we have here is the prophet Elisha or, or Elisha. And so this prophet here is uh, uh, the writer is showing us the power of God operating through this prophet. And so initially you have um, uh, the prophets there. Uh, they're, they're building a, a house. They're building uh, quarters for them to, to stay. And there was a as they were chopping wood, one of the, the, the men's axes broke. And the metal part of it went into the water. So he cried out to the prophet and, and said, Alas, my master. And the reason why is because uh, he said that it's because uh, uh, the, the, the axe was borrowed. It was a borrowed axe. And so the axe sunk. So whoever he borrowed the axe from, he would not have the ability to give it back to because it sunk in water. So he cried out to the prophet and the, the prophet made the metal rise to the top. Although this axe sunk, he performed this miracle to where it rose and he was able to retrieve the axe head. And after that, you have... Uh, the writer expressing more of how the power of God is at work in this prophet. And so what happens next is uh, uh, the king of Syria is trying to make war against God's people. But the prophet is telling the king of Israel, God's people, everything that the king of Syria is planning to do. So the king of Syria gets mad he calls his people in and say, there's somebody who's working as a double agent. One of you is for the king of Israel. And the reason why I know that is because we have classified information. We have top secret information that's being released to the other side. So somebody is responsible for that, and somebody better tell me right now who this person is who's giving away our secrets. It's espionage. And so one of the servants of the king says, no, my lord, it's not that nobody, it's not that somebody is giving away the secrets. Well, what's the problem then? Every time we make a plan, they find out about the plan. If we're going to be over here at a certain time, it's as if they know not to be there. So something is going on. So the servant of King, Syria, uh, King of Syria says, well, here's what's happening. Here's the reason why. He says the prophet Elijah is telling the king of Israel not only our top secret government information, but he's telling the king of Israel even the stuff that you speak from your bedroom. The things that you speak in confidence. The things that you say that nobody else is listening to. Prophet Elisha knows those things and he's telling it to the king of Israel. So notice that that's a lesson for us that we must recognize that 
even when nobody else is listening, guess what? God is listening. So God was with his people. So God will, will inform Elijah who would then inform the king of Israel. And so, uh, uh, listen, in our lives, and, and, and we're talking about help from one high. And so there's been times where somebody being at your job, being in your family, be it with your friends or be it in the church house. Hello, somebody. Sometimes you may have Satan using somebody else to work against you. They may, you be, you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to, to live in the will and way of God. But every time you do that, then guess what? Satan appears in the picture. But notice how, how God works. Sometimes there are things, there are schemes that Satan tried to do that you're not supposed to know about, but somehow, I, I don't want to get too deep this morning, but notice how God works. Sometimes it may be a person that God may send in your path. And that person may inform you of some things that you're not supposed to know. But what God is doing is revealing stuff to you about something or somebody. And so that's what God was doing here in this way with the prophet Elisha. Uh, Elisha. He, he, would, he would tell Elisha the things that the king Syria was saying in the bedroom. And the king of Israel would find out about it. Moving forward, let's go on. Notice what happens next. It says, uh, beginning in verse number 14, therefore, therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. So notice that they found out where the man of God was, where El Elisha was. They, they said, look, he's over there. So the, the king of Syria said, you know what? We're going to go capture this fellow. I had enough. So we're going to go capture this guy. So therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. This was, this was going to be a surprise attack. And when the servant of the man of God arose early, and went out. There was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what is we going to do? <laughs> so notice the king of Syria sent these horses and chariots surround the city by night. So you have the prophet Elisha along with his group. They're surrounded by the opposing army. So one of the servants get up in the morning. He goes put on his soldier's coffee. Or maybe he go buy a $19 cup of coffee from Starbucks. And he's just walking out minding his own business. Just imagine him. Use your, 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 your inspired imagination. And he's just imagine him walking out with his robes and some slippers with a cup of coffee in his hand about to read the morning newspaper. And he look around and see a whole army surrounding them. So just put yourself in that situation and imagine the alarm that that person felt in that moment. So he cries out to Elisha. He says, alas, my master, what shall we do? In times of uncertainty, we have fear. 
And it's normal when we don't know what's going to happen. When we have that sense of uncertainty and instability, then that's when fear arises. Let me give us an example about how you have fear and uncertainty. Now, people who know me well know, know, me and insects do not get along. <laughs> Even the, the smallest of insects, I got a problem with. Don't like being around them. Don't like them being around me. And so one day, not too long ago, on my kids, when they had the trampoline in the backyard, there was, they, they have the trampoline, then they have the, the enclosure on the trampoline. So on the enclosure was a ball. So guess what? They call me. They ain't going to call mama then. They call me. They'll call you mama. So anyway, they call me. So I go inside the trampoline trying to get this insect out. And this wasn't no regular insect. Y'all know those type of insects that, that's in the beetle family? I don't know how dangerous they are, or even if they are, I don't even know. But I do know that those things are just purely intimidating. And so I do what I call the roach approach. Y'all know what that is, the roach approach is that when you see a bug in your house, where you, you, you need to get close to it so you can kill it, but you're scared in a way, so you have to kind of creep up on it. That's the roach approach. So, so I had to do the roach approach to try to get, try to get to this bug so that way I could kill it and my children could go ahead and get on the trampoline. But notice what happened. Sometimes that happened to y'all. Don't say that. That you try to kill an insect and then it disappeared. You spend the rest of the day thinking it's on you. I don't know to this day where that bug went. But I'll be having to go inside the house, ask my wife, you see that bug anywhere? Is it on me? So in that moment, I have the fear of the unknown. And so sometimes when life throws us various, various challenges, we have fear because we just don't know What's going to happen next? So in this moment, the servant had great fear because he did not know what's going to happen next. But what he did know, whatever it was, it ain't going to be good. Because he said, we just surrounded. There ain't no way out of this mess. Y'all ever feel like that? You got challenges going on in your life and you say, it ain't no way out of this mess. I got so much going on. I don't know how the Lord is going to lead me out of this. I got so many problems that even my problems got problems. I got so much debt and then the bank got the nerve to charge me more money when I already ain't got no money. I go and, 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 and swipe or write a check or whatever. Then they turn around and charge me what they call a, a non-sufficient fee or whatever. I already ain't got no money. That's the reason why the transaction did not go through in the first place. And sometimes that's what we feel in our problems, in, in, in our health sometimes.
Sometimes we, 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 we're between a rock and a hard place. The doctors say, well, well, you need to take this for that. But if you take this, it's going to mess up that. Well, I don't know what to do, doctor. And so sometimes we have these moments in life. You just don't know. There ain't no way out. You in between a rock and a hard place. So he says, Master, what are we going to do? Where are we going to do? So let's see how Elisha responded. Elisha answered and said, do not fear. I'm wondering what the prophet is thinking when he heard that. Well, too late for that. That ship has sailed because I'm already fear. I'm in fear right now, literally. He says, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So now I'm wondering what this servant is thinking. Bro, I see one. I see you. And I see me. No matter how we shake that up, you could say you, me, my, myself. It's still two people. But you sitting here telling me, number one, don't fear. How is I'm not going to fear? I, I know this bad. How, how can you tell me not to fear? And number two, you're telling me the reason why I should not fear is because we have more people than them. When I walked up this morning and, and when I walked out with my robe and my coffee, I looked around. We are literally surrounded by horses and chariots. But you're saying that me and you are the majority? Somebody got to know this morning that even if you are standing mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. God and you are the majority. When it seems as if your co-workers are conspiring against you, when it seems as if your family is talking about you and building a coalition against you, when it seems as if your friends already had a group meeting before you got there, and when you walk in, they stop talking, still, with you and God, you're the majority. So let's see what happens next. So Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open up his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. The presence of God is always with us. Even in the moments of our lives when it seems as if we can't feel it, you've got to understand that God's presence is always there. There is never a time where God's presence is not with you. Sometimes you may not be able to see it because you're looking through your human eyesight, but you've got to put on the lenses of faith. And when you put on the lenses of faith, you'll be able to perceive things in situations that other people just cannot see. Why? Because you are getting help from on high. No matter what it is that you're going through, God is with you. You're going to that interview, Satan trying to mess it up for you. God is with you in that interview. You're going to try and 
listen to your doctor interpret these test results. You don't know how it's going to come out. You just know that you went to WebMD and it looked like you got all kinds of problems. <laughs> Guess what? God is with you in that room. There are multiple, like in a crazy amount of federal agencies, many of which employ 1811 series special agents. For example, the FBI, right, who's responsible for investigating all types of stuff. Uh, counterterrorism, robbery, criminal networks across state lines, DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency, Administration. They're responsible for investigating criminal networks that deal in like drugs and so forth. Uh, ATF, alcohol, tobacco, uh, firearms and explosives. Anything that has to do with the shipment and movement and so forth of, 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 of uh, of, of these goods. But you have an agency that's called the Secret Service. The Secret Service was established in 1865 to count to 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 combat counterfeit money. After the Civil War, counterfeit money ran crazy. Uh, significant portion of the money in circulation at that time was counterfeit, probably a third of it was counterfeit. So they had to come out with an agency to combat it so that way the American people could gain trust in the American economy. So they developed this agency as an agency that would combat counterfeit money. To this day, they still investigate money crimes. But in 1901, after the assassination of President McKinley, this agency also took on another job function. And what that job function is, is the protection of the President of the United States. Now, since that time, their protective role continued to grow, and they have even a uniform section who, who guards like uh, government venues or venues where, um, uh, where, where people would stay, you know, where these uh, dignitaries would stay. Uh, and then you have the, the non-uniform section who would be responsible for guarding the dignitaries and so forth. And so a lot of times they would do countermeasure things or they would go to venues before other people arrive. And so the important thing about that agency is that they protect dignitaries. There's another agency. You could call it what you want. I'll just refer to it just for the purpose of this sermon, just to just to be illustrative in my point, I'll just call it the, the, the HHSIA, HHSIA. So one thing that you have to realize that as a child of God, you are royalty. You are a dignitary. Why? Because your father mm -hmm. is the king. Mm -hmm. And so you are a VIP. Now, you may not feel like it sometimes because you tried to go somewhere last night. I, I, I mean, a few years ago before you got saved. <laughs> where they didn't allow you in because you wasn't on the list. But remember, as a child of God, indeed, you are a VIP. So you may not have the protection of the United States Secret Service, but you got the protection of an agency far greater, the HHSIA, the Heavenly Host Spiritual Intervention Agency. That's my thing. That's, that's, that's just what I'm saying. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that everywhere you go, the Heavenly Host, the angels of God, the spiritual beings of the universe, protects you. The presence of God is with you wherever you go. You're going to your doctor's appointment. He there? The doctor say you have to start some kind of treatment you've never done before in your life. He's there. You lost your job. He's there. 
no matter what it is you battle, no matter what it is you go through, the presence of God is with you. So my encouragement for us this morning is, is just like this young man had to realize that God is with us. No matter how bad the situation seems, you take off your human eyesight and you, where y'all go? No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> you take off your human eyesight and you put on your lenses of faith. I, I remember the very first time I put on some eyeglasses. I guess I was like 10 years old. And so I was at Walmart. That's where we got glasses from, Walmart. And so we went there. We got, well, got, got glasses. Well, I did. My brother didn't have to wear them until, until later. But, but myopia, I was nearsighted. And so which means you can't see very far. So I put them glasses on and I say, wow, I, like, I didn't know all this. I, I did not know how bad I could not see until I put them glasses on. And so when we put on our spiritual lenses, you be able to see stuff that you never saw before. Because God will reveal to you in faith what you're supposed to see to help build your faith. And to help guide you in leaning even more so on him. And so it's important that you always learn to depend on him. Amen. That you learn to see him even when others cannot. That you learn even through your challenges that he's present. And you know what will start happening? Watch this. What will start happening is that even when you're going through your challenges you still have joy. You will still have a song in your mouth. You will still have nice words on your lips. And somebody look at you and say, how are you going through all that? How are you going through all that and you still so positive? And you realize at that moment that God is with you and it's not you. It's not by your power and strength. It's by the power and the strength and grace of God. And in that moment, you'd realize that God is with me. And not only that, he is allowing me to see through my spiritual lenses. He's allowing me to see that, you know what? He's still in control. Amen. No matter how bad things are, he is still in control. I, 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 I wish I could give you an illustration. I, I, just, just going through 2020 for, for me and my family. I, I saw God. I, I saw God work. I, I did. And, and, and when it came time for my dad to depart, although he had been sick for some time, I look back and I thank God because I saw what God had been doing the whole time. How that God had taken so long to prepare and so forth. And sometimes even the challenges that we go through in our lives, you could recognize. Sometimes you may not recognize it in the moment, but looking back, you could recognize, God, ah, okay, I see what you were doing. You, you, you lose your job, and then God gives you something better. Oh, I see what you're doing, God. And so you have to realize that no matter what, God is always, always there with you. And sometimes you, you, you get in those situations to where you ain't got nobody else to call. We talk about that in lesson three, or let, lesson in one of the other lessons, either three or four, that in those situations where you ain't got nobody else to call, you've got to depend from on help from on high. Because there are some situations that nobody could help you with except for God himself. And sometimes it takes God dispatching an angel from heaven to help you in your time of need. Y'all all right? Y'all good? Somebody said, you good? I'm okay. I'm all right. So listen, you come to God 
You come to Christ by first hearing the message of salvation. The facts that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose again on the third day, believing that, that he's the Messiah, he's the son of the living God. And if so, then you change the way you think about God. Right? You prioritize him over your life. That's repentance. You confess that Jesus Christ is the son of God and you're buried in the watery grave of baptism. But there's somebody in the audience who wants to be baptized. All you have to do is just start walking out now. Just walk out to me. Give me your hand. Give God your audience. If you're listening at home, then scan the QR code. It'll, it'll direct you to the portion of our website where you can fill out the response card. Fill that out. We'll contact you. We'll baptize you today. We'll baptize you through the week. Whenever you're ready, whenever you want to get baptized, my prayer for you is that you are baptized and that you are saved. To this end, I commend you to God, to the words of his grace, which are able to build you and give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. May God bless you. God sent his son and they called him Jesus and he came to love heal and forgive and he bled and died to buy my pardon and empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives and because he lives I can face tomorrow and because he lives all fear is gone and because I know I know I know he holds the future he holds it all and life is worth the living just because he lives. Brothers and sisters, this is another part of the service, which is the Lord's Supper. Acts 20 and 7. On the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached to them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29. For I receive of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. This do in remembrance of me. Shall we together pray? Heavenly Father, Creator, make of all things, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come at this time with our minds focused on the cross back at Calvary. As we prepare for the feast divine, we come praying for this bread that represents your son's body. We come praying for those who partake of it. They do so with clean hands and pure hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In like manner, also the cup. At the supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink the cup, 
ye proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eat it, eat and drink a judgment to himself, if he desires not the body. Jesus, we love you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And every last day we take time to remember you, Jesus, for your suffering, the way you hung, bled, and died, the pain you endured on the Calvary cross. Shall we continue in prayer? Heavenly Father, we also come at this time praying for this cup that represents your son's shed blood. We come at this time praying for those who will take of it. They do so with clean hands and pure hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now come in. And then one day I'll cross that river And I'll find life's fine No war with pain And then as I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he reigns and because he lives I can face tomorrow and because he All fear is gone, and because I know, I know, I know He holds the future, He holds it all, and life is worth the living just because. This is also another item of worship that which is collection. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches at Galatia, even so do you. On the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God and prosper him, that there be no gathering when I come. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 9. But this I say, he that sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or unnecessarily, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able. To make all grace abound towards you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he had dispersed abroad. 
He has given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. He may now give. I know Jesus, yes, he will fix it, he'll fix it for you, for he knows just what to do, well, whenever, whenever you pray, just let him, let him have his way, cause I know Jesus, he will, he's gonna fix it for you. He's going to fix it for you. Hey, 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 Jesus, yes, he will. He's going to fix it for you. He's going to fix it for you. But he knows, he knows just what. I know he knows what to do. The Lord knows what to do. Well, when, whenever you pray, just let him, let him have his way. Because I know. Jesus, he will. He's going to fix it for you. He's going to fix it for you. A trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Oh, Lord, trouble in my way. Oh, Lord, I have to cry sometimes. Well, I lay awake at night. But I know that's all right, because I know that my Jesus, he'll fix it after a while. Well, the trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. Oh, Lord, trouble in my way. Oh, Lord, I have to cry sometimes. Well, I lay awake at night, but I know that's all right, oh Lord, because I know that my Jesus, he'll fix it after a while, after a Shall we together pray? Our Father, which art in heaven, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come at this time with bow head and on my hearts. Thank thee for the many, many blessings of life that thou art restored upon us from the early existence of time up until this present moment. Especially the privilege and the opportunity we as Christians have to give back a portion of our weekly earning. We come at this time praying for those who gave, those who had a desire to give, but at this particular time were not able to do so, that they too may be blessed to be able to give at another opportune time. We come at this time praying for these funds that have been collected, but it will continue to be used in a manner both pleasing and accepting our sight. These and many, many blessings we ask. In Jesus Christ's name, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Before we have our dismissal prayer, we have a guest card from Glenn and Liz Hudson from Anchorage, Alaska. Glenn and Liz, we're glad you're here and you're welcome here at Sugarland at any time. Another announcement we have is, please announce, thank you, fundraiser announcement, your candy is here. Please meet Sister Kathy after service in the lobby. Will you please call their names? Uh, Sister Jackie, Paula Taylor, 
Hart and Sister Harden, Carla Kaiser, Brother Stanley, Sister Parker, and Denzel Barrett. So for those who are have that candy, you can meet uh, in the foyer after service. Have a couple of uh, prayer requests. Church, please pray for my grandson, my granddaughter, Quint, Quiana Perez. This comes from that she make better decisions or better choices in her life. Sister Diane Howard. Also, Sister Howard says, please keep my grandson Elijah in your prayers. Thank you. Now, can we be dismissed at this time? If you would pray with me. God and our Father, we're again thankful for this another day that you've given us. Father, we thank you for the time that you've given us so that we can come and study another portion of your word. Father, we hope and pray that everything we said and done today was pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And we pray for Sister Howard at this time, for her granddaughter and grandson, one that will have to make choices, better choices in her life, her granddaughter and her grandson, uh, whatever ailment that he has at this time, we hope and pray that you will come and you will fix it. Now, Father, as we leave this place and never your sight, forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen.